And honestly, this is a step that I wish I implemented so much earlier in my routine. Hey everyone, it's Annie and welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to talk all about acne and my acne journey because it has been a journey. I have been dealing with acne since I was a teenager and ironically, it actually wasn't too bad when I was a teenager. I would just really get a breakout here or there and I would go to my spot treatment by Shiseido that was formulated with salicylic acid. I would apply it for maybe a night or two and then my blemish would go away. And this kind of continued on into college and it wasn't really until I got home from college until my acne started getting really bad. This is when I started getting multiple breakouts or cystic acne breakouts, which is that really painful acne that's underneath the skin that takes a while to come to a head. And honestly, throughout my 20s and even really in my early to now mid 30s, I've still struggled with acne. It really wasn't until recently Recently, like these past couple of months where uh, I feel like I've finally really gotten a hold on my acne and managing my breakouts. And acne is such a difficult skin concern to really address because there can be so many underlying factors that can cause acne. It could be the skincare you're using and you know even beyond that it could also just be from the lifestyle you're living. I know from personal experience certain foods or food groups cause me really bad acne. I've implemented changes in both my skincare routine and also my lifestyle that has really helped reduce the severity of my acne. So instead of constantly dealing with breakouts, now my breakouts have decreased to maybe once or twice a month. Of course, I still get breakouts, especially around that time of the month. My skin isn't perfect. No one's skin is perfect, but I'm really happy with the progress that I've made with my skin and how I've had a reduction in my breakouts just overall. So my advice to anyone who's currently suffering or dealing with acne acne is I know it's tough, but you just have to be patient and keep testing topical skincare, keep testing food groups. I think trying to figure out the root causes of your acne can be really difficult, but within the process, you're really going to start to understand and to know your body so much better. So it's definitely an effort worth putting in and know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So first, let's talk about my topical skincare and the ingredients that have really helped me get a hold of my acne. So the first bucket of skincare ingredients has has to be retinoids, retinols, and retinals. And honestly, I encourage anyone over the age of 25 to incorporate one of these ingredients from this group into your skincare routine. Because this group of skincare ingredients address multiple common skin concerns like texture, hyperpigmentation, and firming skin. There's a reason why tretinoin is considered by almost everyone to be the gold standard skincare ingredient. Through a different study, we know how effective retinoids are on skin and is pretty much the strongest retinoid out there. Tretinoin is basically a really strong skin exfoliant. It's going to encourage your outer layers to shed very quickly so that way the new skin underneath can start to show faster. But because tretinoin is encouraging these outer layers to shed faster, it can be really sensitizing and irritating to your skin. And getting your skin used to tretinoin is a journey in itself. So tretinoin is a prescription only ingredient and right now I currently get it through the website Apostrophe. And what I really like about apostrophe is you can just talk with a dermatologist directly. You can send them photos of your skin and kind of track your progress and let them know if you would like your custom formula to be increased or decreased in a certain type of ingredient. And on top of that, you can get oral medication for your acne as well. You don't actually need to physically go into a derm's office anymore. And I actually worked with them in a paid capacity last year on TikTok. So I think I still might have a code with them if you're interested in checking them out. It took me years to get my skin used to tretinoin, so let me know if I should make a separate video talking a bit more about that. So if you're a beginner or new to these types of skincare ingredients, definitely don't start out with a retinoid like tretinoin or even a retinol. I would start off with something a bit more beginner friendly, something that's going to give your skin similar effects to what tretinoin or retinoid would give, but also won't sensitize or irritate your skin as much. Instead, I would start off with something like a dapoline gel, which is a type of retinoid, but it's a lot gentler. That's amazing for acne. A low percentage retinol, 
not retinol would also be a great option. With retinol, you get a lot of the same benefits as you do with retinol and retinoids, but it's just gonna be gentler on your skin. So with tretinoin, I'll usually use that once or twice a week, and I'll switch off between using either retinol or dappling gel once or twice a week, just really depending how my skin's feeling. If my skin is feeling a bit more fragile and sensitive, I'll definitely cut back on the number of times I'm using these exfoliating products. So speaking Speaking of exfoliating products, the next group of products I want to talk about are chemical exfoliants. So really beta hydroxy acids and alpha hydroxy acids. And my favorite beta hydroxy acid would definitely have to be salicylic acid. I've talked about salicylic acid so many times on my channel, but it truly is an amazing ingredient, especially if you deal with excess oil like I do. And what really separates salicylic acid from other exfoliating ingredients is the fact that salicylic acid is oil oil soluble. So what that means is that it's better than other exfoliating ingredients to get really deep in the pore to melt away all of that sebum, dirt, and grime that could eventually lead to a clogged pore or a breakout. Typically you'll see salicylic acid products run in concentration from 0.5 to 2%. So if you're a beginner, I would start off with a product that's in the 0.5, 1% range. La Roche-Posay and Coco Kine both have great beginner salicylic acid products in that range that I really like. But since my skin is already very familiar with salicylic acid, I've literally been using it since I was a teenager. Within my current skincare routine, I'll use a 2% salicylic acid product in my routine about once to twice a week, just really depending on how my skin's feeling. And I'll cycle between the Paula's Choice, which is the OG, one from Peach Slices, which is an amazing drugstore option, another one from Hero Cosmetics, and a new BHA toner from Thayer's that actually just launched earlier this year. Salicylic acid is so amazing. I've even started using it on my scalp too. Because I deal with oily roots, salicylic acid has also been amazing for keeping my scalp cleansed and exfoliated. Basically, if you're an oily girly, you need to try salicylic acid. So the next type of chemical exfoliants are AHAs or alpha hydroxy acids. And AHAs are really good for enlarged pores, fine lines, or anything else really at the surface. I probably use an AHA in my routine once or twice a week as well, just really depending on how my skin's feeling. I really love using glycolic acid as well as lactic and mandelic acid, and I like to cycle in between these acids because I find that if I use the same product or ingredients on my skin for too long, my skin gets kind of used to it and the results aren't as effective for me. Some of my favorite AHA products are the Dr. Gross peel pads, and those actually also have BHA in them as well. I especially love those peel pads when I'm traveling because the packaging makes it so easy to take on the go especially when you're on the plane. I love this AHA exfoliant from Paula's Choice because it has both mandelic and lactic acid at concentrations that aren't too high, so it's not overly sensitizing on my skin. For beginners, I really like these peel pads from Some By Me, and they include AHA, BHA, and actually a third category of exfoliants called PHA. And PHAs are polyhydroxy acids, and they're gentler than both AHAs and BHAs. PHAs have a larger molecule size than both AHAs, AHA and BHAs, which mean that they can't penetrate your skin as much, so that's why they're considered gentler. So if you're a beginner looking for a bit of exfoliation, then you should definitely check out a PHA product. So besides exfoliating my skin, double cleansing is just as important. Ideally, you should be wearing sunscreen during the day, and some of us also wear makeup. So properly removing both your sunscreen and your makeup at the end of the day is going to be key to preventing acne. I remember when I first started double cleansing, it definitely helped improve improve my breakouts a lot. And it makes sense, right? Because if you think about it, you're going throughout your day, you probably have your sunscreen on, maybe you have makeup on, you're sweating, you're moving around, all this stuff's getting kind of like built up on your skin. And at night, before you go to sleep, if you're not washing all of that off, that's just a bunch of leftover sweat, oil, dirt, that's just kind of lingering on the top of your skin, waiting to turn into a breakout. So at the end of the day, make sure that you're properly cleansing your skin by using a first and a second cleanser. Your first cleanser is either gonna be a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm. And this step is really gonna help get rid of that leftover oil, sunscreen, and makeup that's on your skin at the end of the day. But using just one first cleanser may not get everything. So that's where the second cleanser steps in. And the 
The point of a second cleanser is just to cleanse off anything that the first cleanser didn't get. Another key principle that I implemented into my skincare routine is having at least one to two hydration slash recovery focused nights. And what I mean by this is usually there are one to two nights a week where I don't use any sort of exfoliant or active on my skin. And instead I focus on using hydrating and moisturizing ingredients to really let my skin recover. Exfoliants and actives are great for our skin, but we can't just be exfoliating our skin all the time. Our skin needs a break to recharge and renew itself as well. And you're giving your skin a break when you stop all of the actives and really focus on hydration. These are typically the nights where I like to finish off my skincare routine with either a light layer of Vaseline or another occlusive moisturizer, which is also known as slugging. And honestly, this is a step that I wish I implemented so much earlier in my routine. Because in my 20s, I thought, oh, I'm just gonna exfoliate my skin because exfoliants get you the most results. But exfoliants aren't really gonna get you the best results if all you're doing is exfoliating your skin. Constant exfoliation is just gonna lead to a damaged skin barrier, which means that your skin is just gonna be red and sensitized. Trust me, I've been there. And on my hydration slash recovery nights, I always make sure to use humectants, which are ingredients that keep the water in your skin. And some of my favorite humectants are glycerin, hyaluronic acid, panthenol, and urea. Sulfur is also another ingredient that I love using on my acne. Sulfur is an amazing ingredient for acne because it's antifungal, anti-inflammatory, and it can kill acne-causing bacteria. And typically, I'll use sulfur in either my cleanser or as a leave-on mask. Right now, I've been really loving the Kate Somerville Eradicate Cleanser. It's gentle enough to foam up into a really nice lather. And I like how it doesn't dry out my skin, so I can pretty much use it every day. Sulfur is also one of the key ingredients in this Murad Acne Mask that I really love, especially when I'm having multiple breakouts or if I'm just having an area on my skin that's just feeling congested. As for tools, there is one essential tool that you need to have for treating acne, and it's a high-frequency laser. This laser is amazing for breakouts, especially for those cystic breakouts that are underneath your skin, painful, and just feel like a really hard lump. And those are the worst types of breakouts. When I feel one of those breakouts coming on, I immediately grab my high-frequency laser to zap that spot. And what the high-frequency laser is doing is basically killing the bacteria at that spot. And I've noticed that when I do use a high-frequency laser versus when I don't use a high-frequency laser, the breakout is not as bad. It actually gets rid of my cystic acne a lot faster. And sometimes it'll just completely go away within a few days. At the very least, it shortens the timeline of a breakout significantly. So I'm spending less time treating it and also less time waiting for it to heal. When I was struggling with cystic acne, having this tool was literally such a game changer. Because if you've had cystic acne, then you know it can take so long for cystic acne to even come to a head sometimes. And of course, it can take such a long time waiting for it to heal as well. So if I can save any time with cystic acne in those areas, I'm totally down for it. So now that we've discussed all the topical skincare and tools that I use to manage my acne, there's also some major lifestyle changes I've made that have really helped improve my skin. So the first group really relates to my diet. In my 20s, I realized that every single time I had dairy, it would pretty much lead to a cystic breakout on my chin. I've mostly been dairy free in my day-to-day -day diet for the past like five years. And of course, this is really challenging because for me, it was really hard to give up cheese and ice cream. But luckily, now there's a lot of different vegan options available in the market, so it doesn't feel like it's as big of a sacrifice as it once was. Now I have my own Ninja Creamy machine where I can make my own vegan ice cream, which is life-changing. So if you're an ice cream addict like me, definitely look into getting a Ninja Creamy. Besides dairy, I've also noticed that there's other food groups that can cause me breakouts as well. I've actually been working with a nutritionist this past year and she really helped me realize that when I have too much gluten, coffee, and sugar, that can also lead to some pretty bad breakouts, which can be challenging. I think for me, it's honestly all about balance. I can't say that I'm gonna completely cut out dairy, gluten, sugar, and coffee out of my life forever, but now I'm just a lot more mindful when I do have these foods. Another thing that I've been kind of like testing and gauging too is I have noticed that these foods 
foods impact my skin differently depending on where I am in my cycle. So if you're someone that menstruates, another layer of nuance you should consider when it comes to your skin is where you are in your cycle. I've noticed that the week before my period, I am especially sensitive to all of these food groups. So I definitely try and eat as healthy and clean as I can. I think it's just really important to know what foods could potentially trigger your skin to flare up. So that way you are informed and can make a decision on whether or not you want to indulge because at the end of the day, it is all about balance. I also tend to kind of relax my diet when I am traveling because I've noticed that whenever I have these food groups, dairy, gluten, sugar in other countries, I actually feel fine and so does my skin. In my diet, I really just try and focus on whole foods. So lots of fruits, veggies, legumes, nuts, seafood. I try not to eat too many processed foods because that also definitely breaks me out. And there were even a couple of months this past year where I was avoiding dairy, gluten, sugar, and caffeine, which was so difficult. But even though it was really difficult, I think it was actually a really good exercise for me because it made me realize that there's still really yummy food options out there. And I plan on creating some upcoming content to share these recipes that are free of gluten, dairy, and sugar that I really leaned on during my time avoiding these food groups. Even though it was really challenging, it wasn't impossible. And personally, I love to cook, so it was a really good challenge for me. Some supplements that I take to help minimize my cystic acne, number one would be spearmint tea. I love having a cup of spearmint tea every day because I love the taste and it's known to reduce your androgen level. When you have a high level of androgens in your system, unfortunately, that can lead to cystic acne. Saw palmetto is also another daily supplement that I take that has really helped reduce the amount of cystic acne that I have. I was actually considering going on spironolactone until I started saw palmetto and it has honestly worked really well for me. Another thing that could be breaking you out are some of the daily supplements that you're taking. It took me over a year to realize that a fish oil supplement I was taking every single day was actually giving me some of the worst cystic acne of my life. And it's so ironic, right? Because I was taking this fish oil supplement to help improve my skin when it was really just making my skin the worst it's ever been. So if you're dealing with breakouts and you're really not sure where it's coming from, definitely take a look at the supplements you're taking. A lot of supplements are known to cause acne, but we are all different and how our bodies respond to different supplements will definitely vary. Some other lifestyle changes I've made outside of my diet that have really helped with my acne would be washing my pillowcases once a week. And like I've said previously, I do have oily roots. So I know that when I'm sleeping throughout the week, the oil from my roots is definitely getting into my pillow. So it's really important for me to just wash my pillow once a week and to make sure that it's clean. So the last lifestyle change I made is after I wash my face now, I do not wipe it off with my bath towel. There's just so much stuff on your bath towel that you don't want touching your face. And doing this may seem small, but it's really helped me reduce my acne. And the last piece of reducing my acne are in-office treatments. So about once or twice a year, I really like going in office to see an esthetician to get a facial with extractions and sometimes a chemical peel if I'm feeling like my skin needs it. I see this as almost kind of like getting a tune up for your skin. And the most important part about this facial to me are the extractions. I have to see a licensed esthetician to get my clogged pores and blackheads professionally extracted because I know if I do it myself, I'm just gonna end up damaging my skin. Case in point, last month I tried extracting a pimple on my forehead, but I completely botched it and it just left me with this gnarly acne scar I'm still trying to heal. It's also one of my favorite ways to treat myself. So that's everything I've done to really help reduce my acne into a much more manageable state. Of course, this list is gonna be ever-changing as our bodies and skin are ever-changing. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.